On this week's edition of the program, a female artist pushes the boundaries with her art and installations. Then one of Bole Shoinka's plays graces the stage at the National Theatre in Lagos. We'll see that and more on today's edition of Art House. A warm welcome. I'm Melinda Akinami. Even if you put me in prison, I'll keep on writing in the language that made you put me in prison. May Okafo is a ceramist by training and uses this exhibition to encourage people to be more creative in order to reduce the dependence on foreign goods and services. But don't start thinking pots or vessels yet because what you're about to see in her solo show doesn't even come close. The revolving art incubator plays host to contemporary artist May Okafo and her exciting works of art and installations which discuss national issues in a rather unique way. It talks about the infiltration of foreign goods and services into Nigeria, into homes, into offices, into every aspect of our lives. You know, we buy a lot of imports, we eat these things, we, we, we process these things and you know, by processing, I mean, some of them are like full stops. Her solo exhibition titled Consumate and Cannibalism, this artist looks at the consumer culture in Nigeria and how the little products like toothpicks are purchased from beyond the shores. We have bamboos all over the bushes, but down to toothpicks made of bamboos, we're importing them from China. Down to cotton board for your ear, we're importing them for what? So my project generally is um, talking about the fact that these importations are eating us up. We have to rethink, we have to check it. We should in fact look beyond the government. I discovered that in the Nigerian market, um, the apple is like the commonest fruit. You find that you walk into an average shopping mall, into an average food store, and discover that the major fruit there, apples, pears, and the rest. When you get to the park, you get into a boat, and you want to buy fruit. The first fruit that passes you by is apple. You know, so I discover that um, these things being imported and they are common like this, it became something of worry to me. And I began wondering, like, what will become of our future if we just keep importing those things? If we just keep importing almost everything? Now, it's not just about the apple. The apple is only a metaphor. With these works of art, she creates a platform for national discourse, wondering why a nation endowed with human and natural resources can be so needy of foreign goods. A lot of services in Nigeria are imported. These days, people build houses and the medicines are even imported down to the medicines, down to the tiler, down to the roofers, you know. So to me, it's a thing of concern and the material I am working with um, particularly is um, apple crates, the crates from apples, you know. It is marveling how these crates come in quantums because they come with these apples that, they, that themselves come in quantum. So in our dustbins, you discover a lot of crates there. And they are waste, they are made of styrofoam. These things are difficult to dispose, they are non-biodegradable. So they are, we are endangering our ecosystem. Our eco-waste is piling up because of imports. Why can't we produce our own? Those are the many questions that plague this artist's mind. We, as a nation, should find a way to produce of our own. And that is part of why I have brought the ceramics as part of the exhibition, you know. To me, um, I'm trying to give hope, like there are some, there are many natural resources that we haven't even explored. Okay, now we are importing apples. What has happened to our farming skills, our local apples, the Odara, as Zebo would call it, the oranges, why are they not too common? The purple, the watermelon, what has happened to all of them? Why is the apple the commonest and yet imported? 
you know so i think we should look back as a nation and um know what we can do for ourselves know what we can multiply know what we can export we must not always import and import you know when you think of it as a family to be clearer imagine a family that doesn't earn money but then keeps eating keeps buying things keeps spending money from the reserve what's gonna happen in the near future a lot goes into the production of each piece Time and precision, plus the materials, are key in putting everything together. Out of the works are uh, cowries. You see forms that look like cowries. You know, I'm trying to get down to our roots. You know, cowries were a means of exchange at the you know earlier early years of Nigeria as a nation. It was a means of exchange which you could go to the market, you give cowrie, you take something that you want you know just like money just like every other money you know so um i've tried to use clay which is a natural material to create as i'm trying to relate it back to our money let us find our roots maybe that can help us back around the 1970s nigeria was the number one producer of cocoa in the whole world number one but today we are struggling with being number seven and being number eight what has happened has our lands decreased has our farming skills vanished? What has happened? One of the things that bothers everyone is the issue of our economic situation. And she's managed to use this exhibit to reflect on that uh, without being overbearing, but at the same time touching on that issue of us to look at how we need to go back to local uh, content. You know, we need to start to patronize local goods. We need to start to uh, think about how to develop our industries locally. Uh, we need to try to support uh, people, you know, uh, producing things within the country. Step back and one can better appreciate what she's trying to create. There are different aspects of his craft that tells different stories from what you see on the, on the rails of the net to what you see on the wall that combine to tell the story of how the artists feel and the type of material that he uses to bring his idea to life. This unassuming artist shows that big things really do come in small packages as viewers are amazed to see what runs through her mind. But those who have followed her closely have this to say. May's work is different, you know, first of all, because she uses uh, a very interesting material, which is uh, apple crates. Uh, what you would typically uh, get from styrofoam, or what you call styrofoam or polystyrene. And uh, she's transformed this into an aesthetic that she's also using as a metaphor to speak about uh, ongoing issues within the country. And one of it is this issue of infiltration of foreign goods uh, in the Nigerian market. And she has done this beautifully well in this exhibit. Um, she's managed uh, to convert uh, this apple crate into something that is aesthetically appealing uh, but at the same time she's uh, also using this as a means for us to actually reflect on the ongoing situation with our economy in Nigeria. This graduate of the Department of Fine and Applied Art, University of Nigeria in Suka, is a ceramist by training and obtained her Bachelor of Arts degree and Masters in 2010 and 2014. But she has evolved from the training she received in school and become her own woman, finding her voice through this medium. May Okafo has participated in numerous exhibitions with many awards to her credit. She's also willing to share her knowledge and experience as she currently lectures at the University of Nigeria in Suka. The revolving art incubator intends to create the right atmosphere for artists to impress themselves and toy with new ideas. They give viewers a taste of it in Mayo Carfor's exhibition. Talk about a woman on a mission. May just transformed that gallery with her works of art.